Well, I think we're ready to start. Uh, Jules, you stop me if, if I got that wrong. Um, you're not stopping me, so I'll just go ahead. Welcome to the... the <laughs> one minute, one, one, one minute. Sorry, sorry, I was oh, muted. Sorry. I'm, I'm still waiting for the pitchers to join us. Uh, ah, okay, they're, they're quite important for this. I can they, they, are, they are, they are. So I thought they would leave the breakout room themselves, but they did not. So uh, I guess they, 10 more seconds and they are being kicked yeah, out. I, I, they look on in the room as if they're in the room for me. Yeah, they are here. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect, then you can, can start the presentation. Great. Um, well, welcome. Um, this is the final session of the Dragon's Den uh, series, this uh, CBA 15. And um, we know that a lot of people have done a, a lot of hard work to, to get ready for this. Uh, we're very privileged to have a, a very distinguished uh, and very nice, I need to add, a um, uh, uh, bunch of dragons that will ask some pointed questions and uh, uh, provide maybe some guidance. Um, but before that, maybe next slide, Jules. Uh, the structure, very straightforward. We'll introduce the dragons and the, and the pitchers, um, and then we will uh, invite the pitchers to hold their um, presentations. We will allow some questions from the audience and, and the dragons I know have, have prepped a couple of questions uh, based on um, their impressions, their backgrounds, and also the criteria that we've, we've talked about uh, these uh, few days. Uh, we'll then uh, take the dragons out of the main room and put them in a breakout room where they will discuss uh, the presentations and pick um, their winner. Uh, at the same time, the audience will vote uh, with the Mentimeter on, on their winner. And then we won't announce who the winner is because we'll do that tomorrow at the large plenary. Um, but we will um, we'll give a little bit of feedback. Um, it's possible that the dragons will give a bit of feedback at that point um, uh, as well as, as the audience. So that's where we are. Um, if I could have the next slide, please. So this is a slide that we've shown a couple of times uh, to the to the ones that will present this year. Um, and I see four really good looking people uh, looking back at me there. Um, we're uh, privileged to have uh, Koja Annan with us, Managing Director of Vector Global and Executive Vice Chairman of Made in Africa. He has many more hats and is, is quite, um, quite active with what he does. We also have uh, Doris, who is, I'm so proud of this, a winner from two years ago when we had this uh, conference live in Addis Ababa. And, and she made, she gave this really passionate, strong presentation. So thank you, Doris, for, for joining us. She's running a, um, if I can summarize it, as a, a waste management uh, company in, in Nairobi with um, big tentacles into the, to the community, um, very strong. Um, we, all, we also have Edith Kiss, who is an investment and development director at uh, Mirova Natural Capital. She's been with us before, so she's the, I guess, veteran in, in this, together with Doris. Uh, and finally, we have Adam uh, Bornstein, who is lead of the Innovative Finance and Systems Change bit at the Danish Red Cross. Um, uh, I've had the pleasure of working with Adam in the past, and I've, I've seen him uh, come up with stuff that I was like, you can really do that? And then he goes and does it, which is pretty cool. Um, so um, that's... Um, that's uh, the distinguished uh, dragons. I think before we start the pitching sessions, um, because some of you guys that have joined the call now um, uh, uh, indicated that you might want to present and we just wanna make sure we're, we're not losing any of you guys. We already have three confirmed, but, but uh, I'll take this opportunity to ask you, uh, um, raise your intention to present now or hold your peace. So we have Dina wants to pitch. That's great to hear, Dina. Thank you. I, I also want to pitch. Great. So we have uh, two. Anyone else? I think I might try two. Okay. Great, Josephine. Um, well, you said you said it, so now you're in. So if if I can ask you to maybe share your uh, presentations uh, with uh, Jules, and he will add them to the to our deck. Um, coming after the three ones we have already. Is that okay? 
I put my email address in the chat. Uh, let me see if I can edit the PowerPoint while I am presenting it, although I don't think I can, but we will have to figure something out. Jules is a, a tech whiz that has um, um, saved us a couple of times this week already. So, ah, Ibrahim uh, wants to present too, I see. Great. Um, well, with that, I think we just move uh, straight on to the to the first uh, picture, please. Uh, Stanley uh, Ochango, are you um, ready to go? Yes, very much ready. Hey, good. <laughs> yeah, we can go to the first slide. Yeah, so like I uh, said, my name is Stanley Ochango, a social economist at the Center for Integrated Water Resource Management. This is a technical university of Kenya. My project just uh, is on uh, uh, development of a drought monitoring, forecasting and early warning system uh, that is aimed at uh, earning water and food security in Kenya. Next slide. Next slide, please. Now, what problem is, is this that we are solving? Uh, uh, we know that Kenya's agriculture, and this is so for the whole of the sub-Saharan Africa, is still solely rainfall-based. And therefore, drought continues to cause devastation for, uh, uh, with the adverse effects like low harvest across the whole country. And therefore, this phenomenon leads to scarce water, famine, which is now a national disaster in the country, and even economic losses to small-scale farmers who participate in uh, uh, planting cash crops. And therefore, there is need for this solution that I'm, I'm, I'm preparing to present. And you can see there, I have uh, some uh, special maps uh, showing, especially for the case of Kenya, when it had the very worst uh, drought occurrence in 2016. And just another pictorial, I think, showing what drought can cause in a farmer's farm. Next slide, please. Uh, now, what is the, the solution? Like I say, is a DEWS, that is a drought early warning system. This system, uh, as from the chart that I'm showing, is cut out in three main parts. And its main work is that it will deliver drought monitoring, seasonal forecasting that is best, that is six months period best, and then early warning to the farmers. And this solution will enable small scale farmers to anticipate drought quite in advance and then be able to plan their planting so that it is able to occur at a time when there, there is a, a rainfall that is able to sustain healthy agriculture. And the three parts include a hydrological model, and we are suggesting the variable infiltration capacity model. Then there is the real-time remote sensing, satellite remote sensing part, and then uh, uh, the web-based application interface, and, uh, and also now the seasonal hydrological forecasting. And all this is captured in the chart. Uh, for purpose of time, next slide. Now the business plan. Uh, having been informed by various research that are world-based uh, world and with key information from the Aloe Weather Project in Vietnam, the key lessons that I could weave in the team we could pick from that project, specific project, the Aloe Weather Project in Vietnam, we decided to package this project as a public good with our main clientele being national and county governments of Kenya. And when we talk about the revenue streams, we will have annual subscription fees paid by the national and county governments uh, who will be actually interested in offering this service as a public good. And also we will want to bundle the whole service with some advertisement fees in our web-based application interface where we can have some advertisement just for the purpose of maximizing revenue and also giving value for the share that the potential investors. And this project will also generate some income from what we have planned as stakeholder training fees and capacity building activities. 
to NGOs, government agencies, decision makers, community representatives, and all that. Next, next slide, please. One more minute. Next slide. Then we can have, I decided to do a business model canvas as key partners, potential private investors, key activities, key resources, and revenue streams and all that. Next slide, please. Uh, this chart shows just our approach to stakeholder engagement. Uh, 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 it is all, uh, you know, uh, uh, presented and uh, done in a brief in that chart. Next slide, please. Then we have a team of earliest environment environmentalists, uh, starting with Professor Justine Sheffield, who is an expert in large-scale hydroclimatology, Luke Olang, Sospita Wekesa, Robert Wayumba, Janet Ondulo, Tomalata, and myself. Next slide, please. Uh, the need from investor is simply upscaling support in terms of upscaling the whole project to sub-Saharan Africa, which also feels the same in Our time is over, Stanley. Thank you. Great. Thank you. thank you so much. I will take over from now. Uh, Stanley, thank you so much. Yeah, we, we need to be a bit strict because we, we, we want to give everybody the same amount of time, to give thank their you. pitch, and the session time is also limited. So thank you very much, Stanley. Do, do you want to say your uh, only your, your, your main message? Yeah, my main message is uh, really adapted from the Bible verses that were said by Jesus that happy are nations that embrace the drought early warning system for their citizens will realize sustainable water and food security. That is the message to the world. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful, Stanley. So, okay. yeah, as you've heard, there is a sound uh, playing if there's only one minute left. And if there, the five minutes are over, then there's also a final uh, ring. Um, so now we have some time for questions, five minutes, uh, a question from the audience and also uh, one or two questions from the dragons. So if somebody from the audience has a question, please raise your hand or say something in the chat. And in the meanwhile, I would like to give the floor to the dragons to, uh, to pose a question to standing. Can we go ahead or moderating the questions, Maxim? Yes, yeah, sure. Please go ahead, Edith. I know Adam is also has raised a hand. I, I, on my side, yeah, thanks a lot for the presentation. Very interesting uh, and uh, important topic. Um, I know it's uh, impossible in five minutes to <laughs> to give justice to a project, but I'm just wondering if you could maybe elaborate on the business plan and, and how much the investment you're looking for, assuming it's seed funding. Um, the one year, a break even after one year sounds to me quite... Uh, Challenging, but I have never seen a project that i yeah, breaks even after even after one year. So that's if you can elaborate on that. And uh, and I didn't understand the public good point. So your revenues come from the government, or um, yeah, maybe so it's linked to the business plan. My question. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the business plan slide now specifically on the question of how much seed funding we project that uh, with a seed funding of two hundred thousand uh, USD. 200,000 USD, we can be able to have uh, a, a, an experimental uh, a, a system up operational and now just look to, to upscaling. Then on, on public, just elaborating on the issue of it being a public good is that our main client will be the national and, uh, and county governments of Kenya because going to small scale farmers, they have... Uh, uh, their disposable incomes are quite low and their spending power is very low. And this one is a strong lesson that we took from the Aloe Weather, uh, you know, project in Vietnam, uh, which really, you know, say that a lot of these small scale farmers, especially in developing countries, do not have indeed the spending power to, to really, you know, subscribe to services like this. Yeah. yeah, and have you got an MOU or something with the government already? A letter of support or? Uh, 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 
uh, currently a lot of support from the government. We, we uh, physically we we are, we do not have a lot of support, but uh, it is something we have presented to various stakeholders, and specifically of interest has been the meteorological department of Kenya. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I have a sort of follow up for that. Um, when we uh, the Danish Red Cross, we did a um, catastrophe bond, and that required us to build a. Um, risk model, which is similar to the type of model that you're looking at, the hydraulic model for the um, drought. And those can be slightly expensive. Um, and so I think um, just some things to consider and questions to, to think about over time is that one, um, the cost of actually doing the model, um, the cost of the sensors, and the cost of maintaining the system, and getting it to a, a MVP that that basically first model. And then the question of, will people pay for an annual subscription for an MVP if it's still kind of in a sort of experimental stage? And so those are some questions that you probably wanna ask yourself. And then finally, you know, whether or not it's open source, if there are other open source solutions available to you. Uh, Cause 200,000 is pretty small, pretty 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 shallow for, for what you're proposing. Um, and to be at the level of government. So those are some things to think about as opposed to um, that you need to address right now. Thanks, this is okay. very good. Okay, just maybe a quick response on that, on whether people will be willing to pay. I've already said it is not being, you know, presented as a private good. This one is being presented as a public good. And we are literally, you know, uh, focusing on our clientele. Well, our governments, clients. I don't think governments would, would, would actually pay for it. Like, so yeah, yeah. governments are even more difficult than private sector, right? So if you're presenting your product to the government, means to work at a certain level versus having a subscription model for individual yeah. pulling content yeah. down. So it's even yeah. another level above a consumer product. That's my point. Okay. Now well enough on the on the on the on the question about the cost and 200,000 I've already elaborated that this 200,000 USD is simply for the purpose of developing that experimental uh, system already but remember this is something there are works already underway we we have been in, we are in the Brescia project that is GCRF funded and already most of the case studies a lot of the issue of hydrological models have already been developed and therefore we are just you know this is something that is already three years already down the line underway yeah, so this 200,000 is just now to move towards software development and design of the web now interface and all that such like things. So it's already work underway. We have been using funding money to develop some of these things. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, the five minutes of Q&A are over. Uh, Doris, I saw your hand was raised, but maybe during the, the next pitch, you, you, you can pose a question. Is that okay for you? Okay, thanks. So, Jules, um, are you ready with the PowerPoint slide deck? Because then we can go to the next person, the next potential entrepreneur. Yes, of course. Sorry, I thought I was showing you the holding slide, but apparently I was showing the whole process of uh, adding everyone to the <laughs> PowerPoint. Um, yes, I will put on our next picture. Because we have uh, next Jagannatha Ven Venkataramaya, if I pronounce <laughs> that correctly. No, it's perfectly all right. That's why I would like to make it as JV. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is uh, JV from uh, Mysore, uh, South India. Uh, here I'm trying to answer three questions. The first question is, what exactly is the problem? What is the solution uh, we are proposing? And what is the business plan? And what is the outcome expected? And uh, how much of uh, uh, real support we expect and what could be the returns? The topic is climate resilient water security eco-business model for Bangalore urban region. In the imagery, you can see uh, fire, you know, it is nothing but a uh, flare up of one largest water body, you know, lake in the uh, Bangalore urban. So Bangalore is a metropolitan city 
going to be the, one of the most important by 2030 onwards for climate uh, resilient uh, management. Next one, please. Uh, here we have one of the best uh, uh, technological applications uh, from because Bangalore is the hub for the space program. Indian space program is uh, headquarters in Bangalore and every inch of Bangalore is being studied with the geospatial data. And uh, we have technologically very sound uh, support. Next one, please. So the solution proposed is ecological engineering with community enabling and open up for the entrepreneurship. Ecological engineering, because most of the conventional water supply and sanitation programs go with 20, 30 years back technological interventions. It was uh, in our summit, we had the sustainable, uh, you know, Commission on Sustainable Development, which mentioned about the uh, enormity sound technology. Now, we are not seriously looking at the enormity sound technology. Here is an opportunity. Next one, please. A business plan is like the, the, the product and service is water. And the repayment is simply by readjusting and restructuring, there could be a lot of saving. No additional investment for the same product and service, you can have better returns. And the revenue would be in the form of reducing the cost. And customers are households, agriculture, industry, and service sectors. And the payment flow would be basically looking at the operational and recurring cost. For example, Bangalore City gets water from 120 kilometers, spending thousands of crores of rupees for electricity alone, and pumping the water, every drop of water to uh, hundreds of kilometers. So ecological engineering is no scope for it. And the risk is basically uh, compliance to 73rd and 74th amendment, as in agenda 21 and the same period in 1992, we had this to constitution. And the good news is the local uh, Karnan, uh, legal service authority, a new uh, uh, wing of uh, the judiciary has come into picture. They can call and execute things and monitor. That's a good thing. Next one, please. So the team is, as I mentioned earlier, Bangalore is a hub for academicians, researchers, groundwater, surface water, social sciences, management, you name it, even the community-based organizations. They're able to do wonderful work and we want to take up now, what are the key partners and uh, uh, suppliers? Globally, we look forward for the uh, CBA 15 uh, network to come and help us because IAE itself has made about 200 uh, best practices in the uh, cities all over the world about climate resilient planning, implementation, restructuring, things like that. We look forward for it. And the local uh, urban local bodies and uh, the voluntary groups will be the uh, partners. Next one, please. And uh, we, we, we look forward for the uh, investors to pitch in, uh, basically the technical uh, support and uh, uh, financial thing that can be worked out for the pilot study. Pilot studies, thank minute. you. Thank you. Uh, pilot studies to demonstrate that it's possible to change without much investment. That is the whole purpose. And definitely the users will be getting the uh, payment in the water sector from anywhere from three to six years. It is a proved uh, model available already. So I think we have to, you need not have to convince because water, uh, if it is recycled, reused and reduced, it pays back. Next one, please. Uh, here I am, I'm a research scholar in the climate uh, resilient water supply to Bangalore. And also I am a past, uh, formerly a scientist engineer at ISRO with three decades of my experience as a ground support for uh, water supply sanitation. And also, a good thing is uh, I'm also a capacity builder for uh, urban local bodies. There are over 270 urban local bodies which look for, for a good model from Bangalore study we are proposing. And I'm an alumni of International Space University. And also, most important, I'm a recipient of IAED. Wow, that's that was... a gift which has yes. helped me to understand things better. So I have with me uh, Dr. Yami Naitula. He is uh, the uh, director of Water Institute and also professor at Water Resource. And we have a team of uh, uh, researchers. The message is very simple. EcoSense is cost free and it's a real cultural heritage of any sustainable society. You want Thank to implement you so that much. Uh, your, your final words? 
the message is very simple. The final word is EcoSense is cost free and is a real cultural heritage of any sustainable society. And we want to demonstrate for the Bangalore metropolitan. Thank, Thank you. you so much, JB. Thank you. That was great. Thank That's you. really a good story. Thanks. So we, we, we have again five minutes for questions and answer. It, it can be a question, but can also be uh, feedback or advice or a comment, um, uh, anything. So if somebody has a question, please raise your hand. Uh, and in the meanwhile, I can give the dragons also the floor already to, to pose a question to JB. Maybe maybe Doris has the question or another no. dragon. Well, I'm happy to go. Um, sure. Thanks a lot. Um, I, I'm just um, I'm, I'm not super familiar with the sector and uh, I, I couldn't really understand um, the value proposition. So if you could maybe just recap what is the company uh, or the yeah the business how you make money but what, what, what's the, so yeah I, I couldn't really understand is it an engineering solution is it uh, um is, is it yeah the what, what exactly is if you could just recap it with very um, very plain vanilla very simple terms that would be helpful thank you thank you edit uh, i would like to put it in one sentence uh, there is a heritage of industries, entrepreneurs, and the government department themselves able to recover a lot of uh, financial uh, benefits from such initiatives such as good treatment, advanced treatment of recycling and reuse. So what I want to mention, there's a heritage for decades together it's on. We have to do in a very uh, advanced way with the Internet of Things and artificial intelligence and things like that. And most importantly, community enabling. When we have more than 290 wards, see, wards are the uh, you know small uh, units of the urban settlement, and we do have the resident groups very active. Like we have in the villages, you know, farmers uh, water use association, uh, we do have at community level uh, resident welfare groups. They are keen on the urban water bodies. They are keen on uh, the sillage being used for drinking purpose. Please look at that. Now there is a scope for ecological engineering. And when we can prove in a pilot study that these things work out, and it is the, actually the tunnel effect, we can, we can, we can demonstrate uh, with a little of uh, knowledge and skill building, uh, we can do a little of partnership and enabling. That is the idea. Right. So it's, uh, it's, it's a convening of bringing together the right partners, but what is, what is the, you be proposing to a company, what, what is the, the business plan or the business case for you, for your company? Yeah, the, see, we are looking at this project from a, a community-based organization. I'm a coordinator for People Science Forum. Uh, this is a, a unit of Karnataka Rajiv Vijnana Parishat, which is popularly uh, very active since three decades on enabling people with the people science activities, making people understand science, you know, and uh, making them involved in solving their problems. And that will be the fundamental, uh, you know, uh, steward. Uh, coupled to that, we have a Water Institute attached to Bangalore University, which is uh, with the interface for technological and academic, you know, uh, interface. So that the best of knowledge and skill uh, is put in. And uh, we want to demonstrate a pilot uh, so that uh, all these things can work uh, uh, to show that it's possible to do with, with little investment. That is the whole idea. Thank you. Great. So Adam. you got, can, can I just ask one question? Sorry. So, yeah. so essentially you're a think tank who wants to basically put a pilot into the market to demonstrate that it works and then market those services later on where you'd be paid for the services, right? Is that kind of what you're thinking? Exactly, exactly, absolutely. Great, great. We have uh, still time for one very small question. Mm -hmm. 
And if there are no more questions, that's also fine. Right, so I think you convinced everybody, uh, JB. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So, Charles Monioro, Monioro. <laughs> could could, could yes. you maybe help me with uh, uh, pronouncing your, your name correctly and start your pitch? Thanks. You've tried it. <laughs> yes, my name is Charles Monioro. It's from Tanzania. Next, next slide. Yes, my name is Charles Mnyolo from Tanzania. I'm working with a sustainable environmental management action as a local NGO. So my problem, which I want to pose here, is that the uh, Singida region is among of the region found in Tanzania. And uh, uh, most of the community at rural area have lack of uh, rat train improvement at household level. So this results to bad practicing of uh, sanitation and hygiene due to absence of uh, quality at some, at some household level, uh, no hand washing facilities out, outside the, the toilet, which is added to the diarrhea cases on their area due to contamination, contamination of feces. Also, Singida is a, a semi arid area, so there is a unrealistic rainfall season, long drought, and sometimes abnormal heavy rainfall. This, this also results to uh, insufficient food production. Next slide. So the solution which I want to, which will address the problem is one, uh, uh, to use the community health workers to disseminate uh, uh, plantation awareness education and uh, capacity building on climate smart agriculture because these community health workers are being uh, custodian on uh, health issues and they are being doing quarterly basis. Therefore, it, it will be a good platform to use it. that works to address uh, the issues of sanitation and the climate smart agriculture at the household level, at dispensary. And uh, we advocate also on uh, all the village meeting and the ward meeting and uh, at what is C, which is a ward development committee to address the issues of uh, awareness creation on sanitation and the smart agriculture. Also, we'll use a uh, local art sunny for fabrication of slab, which will, will be used for improvement of toilet, and also this uh, ad will be linked with the CHW, which is a, a community health workers to identify the, the, the house which have no toilet in order to sell that slab. And some percentage of the, of, of, of the seller will be back to the CHW for proceeding with the activities. Also, we will use uh, village leaders and the ward leader in the whole process in order to in order to own the whole program and they will also assist you on, on monitoring pro process and uh, technical advice but for scaling up we will also engage uh, local government staff for facilitation ownership on the monitoring and sustainability next slide next slide Yes, the, our business plan, because uh, this community are vulnerable, uh, lack of sanitation education, gap on uh, climate change impact, water facilities and uh, climate adaptive capacity knowledge. Therefore, they will need, they will need awareness education, they will need access of sanitation facilities at the low cost, therefore, at Sunny will, produce, will be capacitated to produce slabs for improvement of toilet. They will, they will sell a slab at least on cost, depending to the economic status of the community. And we will we'll also, we, we expect to have uh, different activities on a uh, capacity building and uh, awareness creation 
and uh, we look to achieve the following output, which will be increasing the number of households with improved toilet, reducing the other cases, and increase of product productivity. Next slide. The composition of our team is uh, like you see on the, the slide. We have three people for implementation, team leader, climate expert, and the M and And also we will engage uh, other partners, local government authority, world development committee, and the village government. Next slide. What do we need from this concept? We need the initial fund for capacity building of CHW. We need the fund for refreshing for fresh training for this CHW, procurement of sanitation register for collecting data, printing of tools for monitoring, uh, fund for documentation. Also for the case of Rock Watson, we need the uh, fund for startup kit to do their work on the production of, of slabs. And uh, for, for the team, the implementing team also, we need a, a budget for facilitate facilitating the activities. And for local government, we need a per diem to attend those meetings. Next slide. Charles, thank you. Five minutes go over quickly. Maybe, maybe some, some last words, one, one more sentence, your main message. Yeah. The main message is that Integration of climate change and the health is a new hope of livelihood improvement, good health, and well being. Thank you so much, Charles. Okay, so I'm looking uh, to, to the participants again. If you have a question, please let us know. And also the dragons. Happy to start again. Um, sure. If you could elaborate a bit on the uh, on the adapt climate adaptation side and climate smart agriculture, uh, what it exactly entails, that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, thank you. What I was meaning on uh, adaptive capacity, Singida, of course, is a semi semi arid. It's facing an unrealistic landfall. Therefore, there is no sure when is the learning for restart and when will it stop. Therefore, the, the education which the community needs is to have a knowledge on climate adaptive agriculture in order to go with the season or with the existing situation. And yeah, maybe you just, yeah, I mean, I will let Doris uh, also to convince just, just to, so we heard about uh, another pitch, like a technological solution for that. So what is the, um, yeah, just look, trying to understand what exactly it, it's given that climate change is becoming, making weather and rain patterns unpredictable. Is there a, some sort of um, solution or is it more, more just generic education on that they need to know about it or do you offer some solutions for this? Of course, they have to know first is the general uh, picture, the general picture of climate change impact, and then to will they give them the solution on uh, giving them the the seed which can 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 can, can resist the the present present situation or the present weather. Which will enable them to, 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 to get a crops for their basic needs. Thank you, Charles. And uh, Edith. So, Doris, you have a question. Okay. Please go ahead. My question is on the business plan. So, uh, will the local be able to? What is the reasonable cost? Because on, you have said they will pay a reasonable cost for the slab. And will the local be able to pay enough for artisan to get something and the community health uh, worker? And how will you sustain the project? 
It's a good question. Of course, the slab, concrete slab, it almost costs for one slab. Tanzania shilling 10,000. So the, the cost for, 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 for buying of the community, it will be like, uh, no, the population of slab is almost 8,000, but they can sell it for 10,000. So the 2,000 2, will be as a saving for the for the for the adson, and this, this will be divided into, into two because they are working in collaboration because the CHW will be identifying the household with no toilet, and that information will be given to artisans. Therefore, they, to know that and where there is the need, they they should use. CHW. Therefore, the percent which will earn from selling that slab, they will be divided. One, one, one thousand is for Adson and one thousand for CHW to proceed identifying the household with, it, with, with, with the need. And this is not a new idea because the government has a national sanitation campaign. They are, they, are, they, are, they are proceeding with these things. So it will be sustainable because the national, the, the government also, the government itself, it supports this program. Thank you, Charles and Doris. So let's go to the next uh, presenter, Dine. Please go ahead, five minutes. Thank you, thank you. Um, thank you, JRP, IUCN and CBA platform uh, for this uh, platform and also the opportunity to learn and pitch. Um, so uh, the topic I'm going to cover today is mostly going to be, the pitch is going to be about preventing wild animal attack. Uh, I'm Dini Tamang, currently working on a disaster resilience flagship project. Uh, I'm working as a resilience small advisor. Thank you. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So uh, I'm bringing you today here to a small community uh, that is surrounded by floods. Every year, these, uh, this community is affected by flood and we had barely started uh, protecting them from this reoccurring flood and also the river cutting. But now uh, with every flooding, uh, the wild elephants that are nearby in the national park, they have started coming out of those, uh, uh, of those national parks and coming to the communities. Uh, can you move the slide for the animation? Uh, so, yeah. So now the thing is, the problem is what we had done was we had planted some crops along the riverbed so that we could prevent the flooding. Now that itself is now acting as a, uh, what do you call it, a candy for the uh, elephants to come in. And every year uh, they are uh, starting to experience this. So uh, to prevent this, uh, I am uh, pitching this project. Now, what I am pitching is for a pilot project, a piloting of technology or techniques uh, that best suits the context surrounding the community to prevent these animals from entering into the community and fields. It is not that we haven't tested anything. We have already done and tried a lot of things from uh, different contexts, different countries, looking at different uh, case studies, like using sounds, using the farming tactics, which have loud noises, using the flashlights, using the firecrackers, even digging the trenches around the communities and even uh, having making those barbed fences. But the thing with elephants is they are very clever. And like once they know the way around, they follow the same path. So it's not easy uh, to develop an exact solution for us. That has been a challenge for us. So that's uh, the pitch for us now. We are looking to develop a technology or technique for that. 
Let's go to the next slide. Uh, also, now, who, for the business plan, I, I want to present you like, uh, who is willing to make this investment? For this, I would say everybody is willing to make the investment. The communities are willing to make the investment. Local governments are willing to make the investment. National Park Office are willing to investment. Why? Uh, like, you know, because communities are affected because local government have their social responsibilities to do so. National Park offices, they have their own responsibilities as well, since these are coming from those national parks. Who are our potential consumers of the product that we would be developing? These are the communities that are being affected. And also these are the local government. Why would I say this? Because uh, once uh, one of our local government also said uh, that we saw in uh, some YouTube that they were driving off elephants using drones. So why don't you help us buy the drones? But like we were not uh, sure of whether that technology would be helpful or not. So we didn't initiate that. Like we said, let us test first. Now, if you look at the cost of the drone itself, even the cheapest one is $2,000, right? So you see that there is a willingness to invest and there is a potential for that. What are we selling? Yes, we are selling the technical service, product and technology. I also want to present you some cost analysis, like, uh, could you go to the next slide? Thank you, wow, four minutes already, nice. Uh, so in a single community itself, we have already lost 3.4 hectares of sugarcane, 1.7 hectares of rice fields. That amounts to around 6,750 USD. And looking at the per capita income of uh, individual is only 1,071. That's a yearly income and that much we are losing. We already have four household damage in a year, three people injured and thank God no lives lost. And this happens twice a year. Next one, please. Next, uh, yes. So we are the trusted partners. What we are bringing is our whole team here. We have been working here for 13 to 14 years. Local, we have a strong local partners. We are trusted. We are known by the uh, all the stakeholders as the technical experts. They trust us, the community trusts us. So we, if we bring any solution, they are definitely to follow through and this piloting would definitely be successful. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, okay. Yeah, so as presented here, we are asking for partnership and connections. That is what our ask. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Dine. Um, Great. Adam, I see that, that you have a question. Please go ahead. Yeah, sure. Thank, thanks for um, presenting this idea. Um, I have a, a, a question and a comment. And the first question I wanted to ask was, obviously there's a reason why the elephants are coming across the river to get food, because you said it was candy, but have you actually thought about looking at it from a different perspective as to getting them to prevent them from actually crossing the river by planting the food they're interested in on that side, right? And then have a secondary barrier where if they do cross that, there's another way of, of, of addressing that. So looking at it from a holistic perspective as to what the root problem is. Um, and then the second question I have um, in that is sort of from a global perspective, um, what is the absolute or an estimate kind of like economic impact and the number of potential communities who would be interested in the technology that you're buying and would that be used for something other than just elephants, right? So it's about um, product extension, um, overall to market, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for the question, Adam. Uh, so uh, coming back to the first question that you had, uh, that was about the root problem. Uh, so one of the root problems is uh, the flooding. Uh, whenever there is flooding, the whole of the national park gets flooded and that's why they come out of the forest areas. Now, another problem uh, to what you had already mentioned was, uh, this is a national park area from where they are coming. So we are not allowed to do any kind of other cropping activities. And hence like uh, uh, that stopping or that barrier is not possible. And also like uh, the place where we are walking is a um, boundary between two countries. It's an international boundary. So it's a little bit difficult uh, to uh, go around that scenario. So it's um, uh, India in another side of the river and uh, Nepal in this side of the river. So uh, doing a little bit of work on that uh, is a little bit problem. Uh, 
and about that uh, whole global impact or whether it can be scaled up definitely it can be uh, as i had placed it in the very last slide but i wasn't able to present it but i was also looking at one of the solutions called lion light if you uh, have seen that and i had uh, witnessed that in the TED talk also uh, the little boy had used uh, small battery lamps to uh, um, uh, like uh, to uh, do away with uh, the lions like he was scaring the lions with the lights using a small battery and those kind of solutions are there which can be extended like uh, those uh, localized uh, local knowledge can be used to uh, like implement in other areas also like but uh, for specific for elephants this has this has been trouble in many countries it's not only for nepal because i have seen this uh, technology different local technology being used in different places some people use also chili peppers uh, but like they are not as effective it hasn't been the solution for us so if we are able to uh, give a good solution for this, it can be scaled to not only uh, across Nepal, but also across globe. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. So it's time for the next presenter. Can we have the PowerPoint slide deck? Jules? Yes, I'm on it. Computer is being really slow. Sorry for this. Sure. Uh, just take some time. Just take some time. Okay, we're okay. there. Yes, go ahead. Yes. yes. All right. Good afternoon from Lilongwe, Malawi. My name is Chikumboto Kilembe. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? My name, uh, as I indicated, that's my name there. I work for the Embassy of Ireland in Lilongwe, Malawi, but I'm also a founder of uh, an enterprise called West Watts, and I'm going to present mostly based on this uh, idea that uh, West Watts would like to present to you. Next, next slide, please. So, uh, I, I, as I have already indicated, I work as a vulnerability advisor, but I own a startup enterprise called called West Watts. I've worked extensively on promoting energy solutions for the poor as part of my work in the embassy. And uh, the uh, achievement is a distribution of 2 million improved cookstoves by 2020 uh, as a commitment that Malawi made at the national, at the uh, Global uh, Clean Cooking Alliance. Uh, so I've been motivated by that achievement to do more on the energy side of things. So please, next slide. Um, the problem, uh, the problem that I would like to solve, first of all, is poor waste management in Lilongwe City. Uh, there is lack of waste segregation to support value addition to waste. Just to give you an overview, Lilongwe produces over 500 metric tons of waste per day, and 46% of it is organic uh, waste. So it's a big problem because uh, even though the local city council does waste collection, but most of it is dumped on the sides and uh, causes a lot of environmental hazards around uh, residents in Lilongwe. There's another problem about charcoal. In Malawi, uh, in most urban areas, 74% of the households use charcoal. But the problem is that most of this charcoal that is being used is uh, illegally produced. So they use the uh, forest reserves that government designated as protected to produce charcoal. And because of poverty, uh, the government has been uh, having a challenge to outlaw this charcoal problem. So it's leading to massive deforestation and, uh, and uh, a lack of alternatives in the energy sector. So uh, we, uh, my solution is going to address this. And the third problem is that there is no agricultural protection due to poor soil fertility and land depletion uh, for most smallholder farmers around Longwe City. So, uh, and there is heavy reliance on in, in organic fertilizers. Just to give you a, a, a quick overview, in terms of the yields in, in Malawi, uh, maize is the staple food. But uh, at the moment, most households produce up to 1.1 metric tons per hectare uh, against the potential of over six metric tons of, of maize uh, per hectare. So land degradation, poor soil fertility is a very big problem. So we want to address this problem. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. 
There seems to be a freeze. Hello? The, yes, the solution is your next slide. Do you want to skip this one or talk about your solution? I want to go to the solution. Yes, okay. Th that's what we're seeing now, the solution. Oh, I, I can't see it, unfortunately, but anyway, let me just mention it. Okay, so the solution here is, uh, um, first of all, we're talking about improved waste mess collection methods. So we want to introduce waste collection where there will be disaggregation of waste. So they uh, will produce, will, will provide beans to a selected number of households where they would be putting in their waste. So say one bin, they would be putting in uh, um, uh, organic waste, another bin, metallic waste, and so on and so forth. Uh, but our interest is mostly on the organic waste and mostly uh, we're talking about food uh, waste. So we'll be collecting that uh, using our collection trucks. And uh, from the waste that is collected, we'll be producing biogas uh, from especially food waste and sell it to uh, restaurants and hotels for a start. Uh, and then the other product that we'll be selling is going to be liquid fertilizer, which is a byproduct of the whole process. We want to target mostly restaurants because they are places which are busy and use a lot of, uh, 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 a lot of energy and especially charcoal. Next slide, please. So our value proposition is that um, biogas can substitute charcoal and LPG. Mostly in Malawi, LPG is imported and it's most affected by price fluctuations. At the moment, the penetration of LPG is 0.2% uh, in, in the urban Lilongwe, but we want to increase this uh, because uh, our solution is going to use both LPG and, and uh, biogas. So if you have a cylinder that uses LPG, we want to, to have uh, a, a situation where you can also use it uh, uh, you with uh, with uh, biogas, so that's what we're going to do. The other one is improved waste collection. So with improved waste collection, we we'll enable other businesses to come in and, and and do recycling. We're talking about plastics into bricks, for example, and other items. So it will be a coordinated process of waste management. And lastly, our addition of liquid fertilizer will reduce the burden on fertilizer subsidy program in Malawi where if, if, if households are going to use liquid fertilizer, they're going to improve yields. Last slide, please. So the last slide, we took, uh, what we're looking for, we're looking Thank for, you. we're looking for, yes, for this is about 120,000 20, US dollars as summary of initial investment. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Do you want, want to say one, one last sentence? So one last sentence is that we really need to address the energy challenges in Malawi, because if we don't, in the next 10 years, there won't be energy for most of the poor people in Malawi. So it's very important that we do address it now. Thank you. Great. So I'm looking to the participants again to pose a, a question or provide advice or other feedback. Yes, um, thanks a lot. Um, very interesting. Uh, I'm wondering what's the scale. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't, didn't understand because it was um, rushed the last slide. So the, if you could repeat the the, amount, the costs you, of the investment and, um, and and just wondering about the, yeah the scale uh, potentially. And the second uh, point um, is if you have looked into. Um, uh, potentially maybe uh, carbon finance or uh, you mentioned cook stoves that definitely uh, if you distribute 2 million cook stoves that's, that's definitely uh, something there and biogas as well so I'm just wondering if you have looked into carbon finance as well. Okay thank you so much the first question you've asked about the cost 120,000 US dollars and the, uh, we are looking at a, a biogas plant that is 160 uh, cubic meters and this can produce potentially energy um, for over 200 households consistently. Uh, so that's what we're looking for, but that, that, that there's a potential to uh, upscale it, increase the capacity of that biogas plant. The second question you asked was about, I, think, I, I don't know if I've asked the, the, I think you talked, I've answered actually the scale. Uh, we're talking about 200 uh, households, but for the initial year, we are saying that, uh, you know, in Malawi, the penetration of biogas as well as LPG is low. So 
the entry point is restaurants and hotels. So if you have restaurants and hotels, that will be a starting point uh, so that in the next phase, then we can go to the actual households where we will be selling the biogas and we build the distribution systems uh, for the biogas itself. Uh, in terms of carbon finance, um, uh, this has not been looked up at at the moment. Uh, it, it's a little bit difficult, I think, for uh, entry level kind of startup businesses like ours to go into the carbon finance market. The most important thing is that you start the business first and start some kind of a, 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 you know distribution and then you can then apply for carbon finance. We look at that as an opportunity in the future to, to use that kind of uh, uh, financing. But at the moment, we just want to start and get on the ground and do the uh, uh, production of the biogas. Thank you so much. Okay, so just a, a follow up question on that. Uh, obviously, uh, the, one of the criteria of carbon finance is to be additional, so additionality. So you, you mean that um, without any additional, yeah, I don't know, carbon finance uh, in this case, you think the business place, business case is there? So the, in terms of what you're gonna be able to sell um, the gas and the production cost, it's um, economically viable? Yes, it is economically viable. Actually, our calculations, what we've done with, on our calculations, and especially on the uh, products that we want to be selling, uh, the first one is, uh, you know, the actual waste collection is going to attract a fee, so that's revenue. And the second source of revenue is the actual selling of the biogas itself. And the thirdly, uh, the selling of liquid fertilizer. We've calculated and we've seen that in uh, the, the, return, the returns from this kind of project, uh, would be in two years. So we'll be able to, to make returns on the investment in two years. Uh, but in addition to that, if, if, the, if we have the opportunity to upscale this kind of system, uh, we can make double that. We can actually uh, do the, the, the revenue. We can get the revenue, not in two years, or the returns, I mean, not in two years, but actually in one year. So we are modest in the way we have uh, calculated our uh, our, our um our initial uh, uh, requirements and the profit that we entail, we need at the moment. But we think that we can get more uh, if the, the capacity is increased, but we will we, we'll remain at the, that small capacity for now. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Uh, Adam also had a, a question. Great, um, thanks so much for your time and the presentation thoughtfulness. I have a question um, about the rent. And I was looking at uh, number two, which is 33,000 roughly US. And I'm wondering, is this for a, uh, a short-term lease? Is it an annual lease or is it multi-year? The idea being that if you're putting this much infrastructure into place, you don't wanna be stuck to a short-term lease. And that's pretty expensive as a total cost. Um, so thinking from a sustainability perspective. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, what we are looking at, um, we are looking at acquiring the piece of land like permanently. So that's what we, we think that it can be, can have more value than renting a place because we're talking about a place where we'll be uh, turning the, uh, the, the waste into uh, valuable products. So we need to have long-term lease of the land. And, and I think in Malawi, the idea is that uh, the most uh, workable solution is to buy that land uh, and uh, do the add, uh, value addition. We think that, uh, uh, it's not only biogas that will be doing in the short term. In the long term, there will be other uh, waste recycling uh, um, uh, 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 activities happening. For example, okay. turning plastic into uh, bricks, for instance, and other uh, 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 waste recycling or reuse kind of uh, methods that we can uh, uh, talk about. But for, yes. for now, our starting point is going to be biogas. All right, just, just as just a point then, right, then based no. on where your business very, is very and the work short. that you need. Okay, yeah, very short. So based on where your business is and your market, you need to get that land and make sure that you can actually acquire that land at a reasonable cost because it seems like it's in CBD, in the central business area, it's in the, it's in the informal districts, I imagine. So that could be multiple plots of land um, to lower your time of collection to processing. So just as a thought, over. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thanks so, much. so let's go to, ne to the next uh, presenter, Ibrahim. Please go ahead, the floor is yours.
We cannot hear you yet. We still cannot hear you. Yes. If, you, if you're ready, you can start. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh yeah, my name is Ibrahim Inusa and uh, I'm connecting from Nigeria and uh, I work and uh, found my own little initiative, Nature Conservation Advocates for Climate Initiative, where we advocate to the young people on the need to rise and take action on nature and the climate crisis with the focus on restoration, climate education and uh, waste management. So we are, uh, uh, next slide, please. The problem. So I want to start by asking, do you know the rate at which the desert troubles annually? So I think uh, the, the problem here is desertification and drought that leads to less rainfall and uh, extreme weather with the, with, the, with the certain change in temperature and, 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 and uh, less rainfall annually. So next slide, please. So our solution is through agroforestry and uh, we have a mission of planting uh, 17 million trees by 2030, which are economical trees and uh, indigenous drought resistant trees that can withstand those climate uh, uh, destruction and, and build the resilience of the community back better. Next slide. And uh, sorry, I was working on the working plan and uh, so we want to work with the, with, the, with the local communities where we train them and uh, empower them and give them the required skills and, and uh, necessary uh, uh, tools needed to raise those indigenous drought resistant trees and, uh, and, and, and uh, how they can rethink the way they farm because the farm is not longer productive as a result of this desertification and the drought caused by the changing climate. And uh, we connect uh, after they plant and raise the students, then we connect them to the market and see how they can generate revenue for their own income. Next slide, please. So our team comprises of young academia, community-based actors who are already leading the way and, uh, and, uh, and the community leaders for, for, for intergenerational solution. Next slide. And uh, so we are soliciting for partners and donors who are already working in the restoration, especially on the dry lands of Africa, which, which, which will, to help us uh, with the necessary resources to achieve our mission of, of rising and restoring this uh, degraded landscape and uh, while building back better the resilience of our people and communities from the negative impact of, of, of this crisis here across the Sahelian part of, of, of Nigeria. Next slide. And uh, so these are my contacts and uh, you, can, you can go and look into our works at, at ncaci.org on, on Twitter and Instagram and uh, Conserve Sahel on, on Facebook. And uh, my message is, is come like this. So the, the need to restore the degraded land is, is to bring economic resilience, create jobs and uh, raise income and, and uh, uh, build food security so and we can see that the pandemic has, has played a significant role in lessening the impact of the climate change and the green recovery so let's see how we can we can we can restore back better and today is is all day to combat desertification and uh, which which uh, has three pillars of restoration land, land and recovery so for us to build back better with healthy land the best way to plan the restoration is to immediately stop the process of desertification as as to fertility and to maintain the maintain this by planting more more trees, not just planting more trees to sequester carbon, but to plant them and to, to build the capacity of, of the most vulnerable and the frontline communities. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Ibrahim. Great. That's perfect within time. So if there are any questions, please go ahead. 
I, do, I have one. Thanks a lot. Um, it, yeah, it's obviously a very important initiative. And um, my question is that um, have you or are, are you part of or have looked into the Great Green Wall Initiative? Because there is um, a lot of attention, obviously, for the reforesting uh, the, um, the area in, in Africa. And um, there is no shortage of funds. There is a lot of attention, donor money um, and investors as well as ourselves looking into it. Uh, so my question is, um, typically the, the difficulty is, is, is the capacity building, like capacity on the ground to implement. So could you elaborate on what you, how you're planning to plant these 17 million trees or what would be the solution uh, or the, how to, yeah, how to implement this? Because implementation is the biggest challenge um, in, in, in this area. Thank you. Yes, actually, uh... I had I know of great great green wall and uh, reaching out to them has been uh, like yeah challenging and uh, the the structure they are using they are coming in through the government and so this is also a, a barrier and what what differentiate our initiative from that is that we want to we want to hand this I think we want to do it directly from the grassroots and we we want it to be to be self uh, developed by the by the by by the so I think we the young people and uh, the coming up climate advocates so from the most vulnerable communities find it very hard to to for government to, to, to accept, but we have been pushing, 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 and pushing to see how the government can directly connect us to the initiative like Great Green World because it's intergovernmental and, uh, and, uh, and uh, yes, and also in achieving our goals. Sorry, can you, can you repeat the second question? It's just to yeah, just exactly, and and, and I, I agree with you that it's it's often hard to get into these governmental intergovernmental systems. But it's just just how are you going to implement? So what's your plan to plant these seventeen million trees? You have a you are a project developer yourself. You work with others, or how are you going to achieve that seven million trees target? Since it uh, we want to we want this project to be community based and uh, owned by the community. We want to do this by creating a, a community nurseries where these communities can 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 raise their seedling and distribute it to the to the farmers. So it it's going to be with with the supervision of the community leaders and uh, the respectable people, respected people in the in the community, where 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 they can. They can yeah distribute it to the farmers because because these these the palms are dying so we need to rethink the way we can we can restore and uh, build back better so how can we do that the the usual way of farming will not longer be be, be sustainable so the regenerative and the agroforestry I think is the answer so by them uh, rising this and taking the plant to to their to their palms so we we have a target of having a community nursery in each and every community of the Sahel in, 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 in the Sahelia region of, of Nigeria. So yes, this is how we want to achieve the 17 million tree planting across, across the Sahelian part of Nigeria. Thank you, Ibrahim. Great, great. Adam, you've raised your hand. Um, Ibrahim, thank you very much for your time. Um, I have just a, a couple of quick questions for you. So my first question is, the idea is that you will um, create a nursery and then be doing saplings. And then part of the business model is to sell the saplings uh, to the communities for replant, for uh, reforestation. Is, is that the idea? Sorry. Sorry, are, are you planning on creating a nursery so that the communities um, either maintain their own nursery and they sell those plants, or are you going to have like a central nursery where you distribute the plants? Is that that's the first question? Oh, is that the the, the community will is, are going to raise their own seedling and they they sell it out to the to the farmers? So whereby 
generating the revenue. Not central. We are not using central nursery. So because we are planting indigenous and uh, drought resistance, so every community we're going to build their capacity on how to search for these indigenous seeds and, and raise it their own and, uh, and, and see how they can get. Okay, yeah, and then just one, I know we're out of time. The, the last thing then is that the first part then is that you have to create the nurseries, the saplings take time to grow, then you plant the saplings, they start to grow. And in that time, there's some regenerative process with the soil and with techniques. So there's a long time horizon here, right? At least five, 10 years easy. So when you're thinking about your financing source and how you have how your team is committed, it's a very long commitment process here. So I just think you need to keep that in mind when you think about how much money you need, or how you're presenting the program. So, but very good. Thank you, Ovo. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks, Adam. Great. Thanks so much. I think that was all clear. Let's go to the next presenter. If we can have the slide deck shared on the screen. I think we have Josephine. Yes, Josephine. Are you ready, Josephine? I am ready. Can you listen Great. to me? You hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Josephine Warrenoff. I am a lawyer specializing in fisheries management. I'm currently working with the Environment Law Institute, and I had worked in international relations and trade before moving on to ocean and fisheries management, and more especially small scale fisheries management. I'm also the mother of two amazing boys that probably taught me better than anything else with one that particularly pushed me out of my comfort zone. But let's go back to the ocean and its cohort of depleted fisheries and degraded ecosystems. As we all know, getting the ocean back to health will require everyone to participate and quite a lot of funding. For the funding part, Blue Finance was designated to fill in the financial gap, bringing private money through different financial instruments, included blended finance. For the participatory part, conservationists and many others are increasingly calling for more support for collaborative actions. This is where locally led actions, community-based adaptation, co-management and other collaborative transition projects come into place, bringing different stakeholders, mainly SMEs and individuals, local governments, communities and NGOs together to design and implement adapted solutions. However, when it comes to dealing with the uncertainty of climate change and human behaviors, investors are risk averse. They want, and it is a good thing, some guarantees that their investment is going to bear fruit financially, environmentally, and socially. Standards and indicators, control mechanism and certification are receiving the big role here. But, and I'm speaking as a lawyer, these highly detailed and technical norms were often written with industrial actors, commercial ventures, or highly skilled tech entrepreneurs in mind. And when it comes to local collaborative projects, checking these multiple boxes and requirements can quickly kill the enthusiasm in the egg. In the waters of the ocean, fishermen and coastal communities are increasingly working to transition to sustainable management, but are rarely being guaranteed of getting the economic benefits. MSC certification and other market-based solution to capture revenue is rarely an option for them. So my question here is, how can we connect the dots between the desire to support collaborative action, the need for de-risking such an approach, while guaranteeing its real impacts on the water and for the communities? We know we have to stop thinking in silo and move on to integrated visions, but we are clearly struggling with how to do it. We need to shift the whole paradigm away from trying to fix towards trying to connect. So let me introduce you to our new hope, creative, creating the collaborative governance incubator. So the main role of the incubator will be to welcome local actors, in my case fishermen, with collaborative projects in their infancy or at any further stage of development, fishermen and other actors, of course. They will probably come with their own limits lack of time, money, political instability, skills and knowledge, but full of ideas and potential. There, assisted by a team of legal and governance specialists, they would have the opportunity to incubate their collaborative enthusiasm to turn it into long-term collaborative institutions and regulations. They could further request practical assistance at different stages of their adaptation project, drafting key performance indicators, 
monitoring, evaluation, learning process, special purpose vehicles for finance purposes. We could also assist with drafting new government policy and regulations around the project when the need and will arises. Besides this technical assistance role, the incubator will play another subsidiary role. Rich of our experience and through a collaborative process, we will develop a standardized but adaptable framework to assess and certify small scale fisheries communities on their way to sustainability. Products in fish, like for example, fish coming from such communities will carry the added value of recognized collaborative sustainability. Products that would interest the rescue and sale sector. For that purpose, we will we'll act as intermediaries responsible to assess, verify and report, and even certify the improvement of governance requirement, gender equality, collaborative process, fair distribution of benefits, support for livelihood, no one left behind, etc. How is it go going to generate revenue? Next slide, please. Investing in governance reform is costly and takes time, but there are ways to capture the economic value created at the end. For our revenue model in the long run, companies willing to market sustainable fish from local communities are going to pay for services for their supplier. We also expect in impact investors to be interested in increasing the success potential of their projects. Having access to this technical assistance would drastically improve their potential for success in whatever project they want to pursue, adding a clear value to the project for investors. Our plan is first to further develop our legal and governance expertise in the field by applying this approach to our current project with fishery communities, by researching, analyzing, and connecting with other similar initiatives. Following up, we will develop collaboratively our standard for sustainable <laughs> products. And we will Thank you, Josephine. Sorry, I'm almost finished. We will influence global normative frameworks to open up to local collaborative actions in a more adapted way. So in the meantime, we require a combination of public funds and governments to set up the standards. So what we are going to ask right now, we can go to the last slide. OK, just one, one more sentence. Yes. it's. We are looking for seeds funding to develop a business plan and your enthusiasm and contact to increase our team and network. So to finish, here is my contact in the next slide. And the last message that is clearly stolen from um, one of my former employers, collaborative governance also needs a good lawyer. Thank you for listening. Wonderful, wonderful, Josephine. Thank you so much. So, um, are there any questions from the audience or the dragons or both? Maybe I spoke too fast. <laughs> Nobody? Um, thanks a lot. No, it's great. Um, uh, very interesting. I think we really need this type of initiatives. I'm just um, trying to think um, from a private uh, sector perspective. My, my comment or feedback would be that we definitely need these initiatives, but it's very hard to uh, uh, fundraise from private. But uh, maybe just a question if you have, uh, if you're targeting um, philanthropic or public sources um, or yeah, who is your target? Uh, because I, I think there is a lot of uh, money or uh, yeah, it's not so easy to get, but public, but uh, but maybe that's more suited for this type of uh, initiatives. Just, that would be just a comment more like that. Mm -hmm. So our, our, um, for, for developing the, the, the project at the Environmental Law Institute, we will clearly target some uh, philanthropies uh, grants. Um, but in the long run, we, we kind of hope to, uh, to attract some uh, private sector actors um, and collaboration eventually. Uh, but we also need to be uh, like networking with the private sector because that would, those will be also the people we will try to connect our projects to. So clearly for the, for the funding of our projects, we, we will clearly go for philanthropies, but for the, the connection, the, the network that we need for the project to succeed, we clearly have to go to private uh, actors as well. Yeah, absolutely. And so one, maybe one, um, but I, I think you are already thinking on those lines. So uh, one of the lessons from the market on, on this type of initiatives that it's indeed uh, uh, connecting early on uh, with the end investors um, increases uh, significantly the yeah the success rate or the yeah efficiency of such initiatives um, because even if you have the seed funding then you need to have as you said the investors behind to scale up those projects so if you early on build out your ecosystem 
um, for example, the I don't know if you know the CPIC, the consideration uh, of private uh, sector, uh, um, coalition for private sector and conservation. They work on these kind of initiatives. It's really good to plug into these uh, groups early on, and 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 that can hopefully help the efficiency. Thank you. Great, Ada, Josephine, thank you so much. Okay. Is there yeah, time for Adam? Okay, yeah, okay, small, sorry. Small it's, question. It's, yeah, it's, sorry. Um, you know, what's really interesting about this is around the standards and creating a brand like the fair trade, but something similar to, to fish and in, in, in aquaculture. And, you know, that in itself has a lot of value, but linking up to um, digital identity and traceability using blockchain and things of that nature, NFTs, although those are hot terms, no one's talked about blockchain yet, and I dare to bring it up, but you know, there is a great way to think about it from traceability and from like farm to fork or ocean to fork or ocean to market, however that is. Um, there's some, as you say, like some flash to it that would get people's attention in some ways. And thinking about that um, would be really interesting as well, especially the, the identification, the credentialing side and how that's used. There's a lot of, there's a lot of space to, to play in there. And, and I think you guys would be able to do that. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, good advice, Adam. Thank you. Okay, it's time to go to the next presenter, and I think it's the final one. Uh, John. John, could you unmute? Uh, we heard that you want to present something as well. We cannot hear you yet. So, John, if you want to pitch, then this is your chance. Hello? Yes, John, great to hear you. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm sending my... They told me to put it in a PowerPoint and I have finished it. I'm, I'm just sending it. Could, uh -huh. could, could you maybe just speak by heart and just, just uh, pre present it without a PowerPoint? Otherwise, it takes too much time. Uh, yes, I want just a few, very few seconds. Hello? Or, or you can share your screen. Do you know how to do that? Okay. Okay. I don't think John can share his screen. That's in the settings. Let me see if I can fix Is it. It's okay. Hello? Yes. Is the sharing of the screen? No, we don't see your screen. But oh. if you're comfortable enough, please, please just give your pitch with without a PowerPoint. John, are you there? His screen is frozen. Okay, uh, John. Oh, he left the, the the entire call. So that's very unfortunate. I think the connection is uh, prohibiting me. Uh, it, it, there he is. Okay, John. Are you ready? We cannot hear you.
John, could you please start your presentation? Yes. Otherwise, we, we will start voting for the best presentation. Okay, let me share with, with, without, without, without the, 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 let me start share, eh? let, let me share without. Uh, I'm Kaganga John, eh? I'm based in, I'm working with the Chikamba Environment Association, a non for profit based organization. And for, we have been operating for more than 15 years. And we have made, we have been practicing ecosystem based adaptation, which has led us to make our more than eight village green. Uh, so far, that uh, we call it a forest village, which has really done a lot uh, to make sure that it contributes the reduction of greenhouse gas. Now the challenge we have is that after all that work which have been done, we have, we have, we have been dying, doing uh, a COVID. COVID disease has brought a problem because people now have become very poor. Uh, the, the, the livelihood is, has become impossible. Now they are cutting the trees. They are using Chemicals, chemicals, and medical fees, school fees, food, and so forth. And uh, what is our goal? Our main goal is to look for financial support and technical support to make sure the work which we have achieved doesn't, uh, it, it can continue. Therefore, we want to help the farmers to be given some support in the, the way how they are, they are farming because, they, they, because of COVID, they have become very poor. Marketing their produce has been a big problem. As I'm talking now, we are in a lockdown. People are not moving out here and there. We want to also to plant trees we want to create frozen screen. Okay, so this internet connection is not so stable. Okay, this is a, a really challenging circumstance. Maybe we can move on. Um, so Jesper, or, or uh, does, no, I don't think it's a good idea to pose questions because he will not hear it. He is, he's, he left the Zoom call as well, I see. Okay, so I propose to go to the voting. Uh, this is the final moment, crucial moment. Uh, may we see the slide deck? Jules, can we see the slide deck? Thank you. Yes, of course, the computer is so slow, so you have to give me some time, but here it is. Great, thanks. Yes, so... Uh, uh, Jesper, can you... Take yes, over. Thank you. Yes, good. So now I will ask uh, the audience here uh, to, to vote. Um, uh, you know how to use Mentimeter, I think. You, you log on to this and then you uh, rank the, the different um, uh, pictures um, according to, to what, you, what you feel. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, we will also um, 
um, extract the dragons for a little uh, tete a tete in a in a breakout room and uh, and discuss um, if um, if we can arrange that. Um, Jesper, I have a quick question for you. Um, just just for everyone's benefit, um, the way that mentees organize, it has letters on it and people's names. Could someone just run through what those what those projects were so everybody knows um, who's responsible for what? Because maybe that's not. Um, that's a good point. Uh, yeah, great. Thanks. Thanks for. <laughs> I am sorry, I was scrolling through the PowerPoints for you and then the next slide came on. So <laughs> let me see. I will check if I can uh, give you an overview real quick. But as I said, the computer is not working in my favor at this moment. Can we just copy paste the titles and the names side by side in the chat? That also would work. Yes, the thing is, I don't have a title for every presentation. Um, Maybe the presenters can type their name and presentation yeah. name uh, in the chat. Yeah, we could do that. So all the seven pictures can do that. Apologies for the technical um, uh, challenges here. It's really frustrating uh, not to be able to hear everyone present, depending on, on where they are. And it speaks to the inequality that uh, we still uh, struggle with. But we're trying to do our best to sort that out. Uh, and the dragons, um, we will shortly be in a breakout room to um, um, have a bit of a, a discussion. So you don't have to vote in, uh, in this um, uh, on the Mentimeter.
So have you all voted? We need to have all the votes. Yes, thumbs up. Could you do a thumbs up if you have voted? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. The more votes, the better. And now the dragons are discussing their their uh, opinion and their their vote. Yes, Stanley. Great. So. That's good. So tomorrow, the winner will be announced during the plenary. So this is all very excited. So about 200 people will will know who, who has the winning project. There will be a lot of outreach via social media uh, from IAD. And of course, you will reach a very large audience during the session. There, there's no prize money, but there's just a lot of exposure. And we ask you to, we ask all the pitchers to be there uh, because the winning presenter will be announced there. And there, there you can give a small, very small pitch in about one minute of your ID. So that's very exciting. So I think this is it for today. I'm still waiting for for the host to, to come back in to give some final words. Maybe you can stay on, hang on just for a moment. Getting a message that uh, the dragons have started the discussion. So the vote of the audience will be merged with the vote of the dragons, and they have the last say, the dragons, to choose the winner. So I think they will need another 10 minutes. Okay, so let's uh, round off uh, from here because the dragons are still uh, d discussing and we will choose a winner then based on your votes and the votes of the dragon. So thank you so much for your participation and see you all tomorrow. You know what time, right? During the plenary? We, 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 yes. Um, actually, we'll I, check. I don't know. <laughs> we'll check. Let, let me also check. Plenary starts at 1 CEST, I think. At one. CEST. So, so
12 BST. So be there, be, be prepared to, to give a one minute pitch if you are the, the winner. Okay. Yeah, so just to be sure, only the winner is pitching, right? Only the winner is pitching and the winner will be announced there on the spot. <laughs> Although your pitch okay. doesn't need to be five minutes, it can be shorter. Just a couple of slides very quickly, two to three minutes, tell them your ID. But Jesper said it then that one minute takes five days to prepare compared to five minutes taking three days. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye. Okay, thank, thank you. you. I want to say very well done, all. Good Very job. Well done. Yes. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Bye.